Well, the new meta is here and here to stay, and some of these new heroes are really truly popping off. So let's take a look at a couple of the results this past weekend, take a look at those deck lists, and see where things are falling. Starting with none other than Noah Clark's, aka Darkodius's just amazing meteoric run, we'll put it that way, uh, throughout the weekend playing in the sealed Battle Hardened and winning the sealed Battle Hardened on Enigma and then picking up Enigma in Classic Constructed and running her out there as well. Uh, and this is the list that uh, Noah put out there and just absolutely walked to the finish line with. Uh, and, well, if we're breaking it down, there's a couple of interesting points. Uh, there was a lot made this past weekend in Montreal uh, about Dissolve Reality. This was a card that I had, like, one of in the deck, and I thought, let's try it out. But uh, it, put on, it put on a show, let's put it that way, uh, by basically just forcing your opponent not to be on a five-card hand, even if they're not blocking you. They're just thinking that they're going to be, you know, playing out this huge five-card hand saying no, your arsenal card, which is most likely a good card if you're holding onto it from a previous turn, is uh, not gonna happen. This also seems to have some great uh, merit and use cases against rangers who might be wanting to, uh, you know, maintain that card uh, so that they can start off their turn. Uh, against Fies and against uh, really the more important one is Zen and of course Katsu as well. But Zen trying to put together five card hands, especially when they try to pop off on you. Uh, you can just take away that arsenal card, which could be something like an Art of War. It's a good card overall and uh, definitely one that I'm going to try a couple of more copies of just to see what it's like. As far as how this deck overall plays though, the biggest thing to note is that we're playing efficient blocking cards. We're playing only the perhaps best quote unquote uh, instant auras that are warding three. We're not playing a bunch of the, uh, you know, like less impactful blue ones that you see down here. We're really just focused on ward three, on a very good uh, spectral manifestations that's going to come in with uh, like a spectral shield plus three uh, with the go again. So four go again, which is a nice weapon swing. And then these really good, big, efficient attacks in Battlefront Bastion, uh, Command and Conquer, Miraging Metamorph is in everybody's lists. This one's been around already, obviously CNC as well, but running the seven power Battlefront Bastion has a lot of use cases as well. Obviously it attacks um, very efficiently, but it also has the capacity to uh, pop into prism matchups and into, you know, I guess technically uh, the mirror. It can pop into the mirror if you want to use it for that reason as well. Uh, the biggest cards, in my opinion, in this deck are these though right here. Restless Coalescence. When this card was spoiled, I was very hyped on this card and uh, it is proving its merit in this deck. I think this is probably the best card in the deck simply because it can enable so many tricky things uh, to be able to just like pop out spectral shield tokens, but save plus one counters and uh, just create extra ways to stop on hits. This card is nuts. It's super, super good. And Manifestation of Mirror Guy can also be a just an, a massive snowball on uh, any given turn that you can pitch into Chi. But there's a couple of cards that you might not expect to see in here. Something like First Tenet of Chi Moon. I actually very much love this card uh, in like different versions of Enigma. I built a weird version of Enig Enigma that I may make a deck tech for because it's a little bit of a kind of off the beaten path, similar to the new thing that I was doing with contracts, uh, but it's, it essentially just draws a bunch of cards and uh, allows you to just like get value off of the extra cards that you draw, especially when they're blue. And this is one that I have like in that deck. And this this card really overperforms for me. So I was surprised to not see very many people trying it out. But yeah, this is a fun one. Uh, it basically just gives your blue attacks uh, when it attacks draw a card. And then of course you can play that with like levels of enlightenment um, on top of it to draw a card. Uh, it's a very, very cool little combo. Less haze bendings and uh, shimmers of silver I think is completely missing if I do, if I, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I looked at this list a couple of days ago as well. No shimmers in this one as well. That's gonna definitely pique a lot of people's interest. And this is something that Noah talked about, the idea that these cards aren't necessarily very good. Haze Bending is good enough to make the deck in his mind, simply because it can pop out those Spectral Shields perhaps. Uh, but uh, the Shimmers of Silver missing here is not gonna give you that plus one. It, it can snowball the board, so I'm, I'm intrigued to hear more from him um, in that respect, but perhaps uh, that's not even really a consideration as snowballing the board is not super duper necessary when you just have the ability to be this efficient uh, with all of these good blocking cards, even two red unmovables, which a lot of people are on two to three red unmovables right now. And then just be able to like do tricks to maintain your life total with like Restless and 
other like blues, dense blue mist being able to stop ninjas in a very painful way. Obviously you have your sinks in there as well. And then you have your big bombs of attacks and technically you could also get 10,000 year reunion out there uh, in some use cases. But a very efficient list and one that I bet you a lot of people are going to be using as sort of a, a base list and running with. In fact, this has been posted. I wonder if people are already playing this. Let's see, uh, results. If people are, yeah, uh, that's kind of funny. 190 playthroughs. The win rate's at 41%, but I think uh, the thing about this deck is it's incredibly, incredibly skill intensive to pilot. Um, and you could, you could definitely see that. It's definitely gonna be one of those very important uh, what's the word? It's important to know exactly when to make certain plays. Otherwise, you could just crumble under the pressure. And, uh, well, one of those heroes that's clearly pressuring people playing this deck is Zen Tamer of Purpose. As you can see, that win rate's not great. And, uh, well, Zen made some waves this weekend as well, also picking up Living Legend points. So at the UK Games Expo, they ran a ProQuest Plus event, and Jake Warburton, in fact, if you want to see, there's Jake right there. Jake picked up the win with Zen, and if you've been paying attention to Zen over the past week or two, Zen has really popped up in a lot of like top players' minds as one of the best decks in the format, partially because of the uh, combo lines that are available to you if you run Bonds of Ancestry. But I want to point out this list specifically does not run Bonds of Ancestry, and yet it's still one that uh, 50 plus person ProQuest plus. So let's take a look at what we have here uh, kind of to play with. So first things first, this is mostly a Tiger Taming Kakara list. The Harmonized Kadachi plus Arcane Lantern is only most likely going to come in versus Kano. That's why you also have the Null Rune, the Spell Fray, and the Tide Flippers. So you technically have access to AB1, 2, 3, and Spell Void 1, which is kind of insane. In a ninja list, and I would just say this, in history, Ninja has some amount of blues if you're playing Katsu and almost no blues if you're playing um, if you're playing uh, the other ninja, Phi, uh, whose name I just blanked on for some reason. Anyway, if you're playing those decks, you have some capacity to play into um, Arcane Barrier, but really it just becomes a race matchup. It's like, okay, I'm going to try to put damage on the board. Whereas Zen here has a large number of blues, can actually support AB3 fairly uh, approachably, and playing the spell fray means that this actually feels pretty scary to play against, I would imagine, if you are um, sitting down as Kano. Now, of course, Kano can still do Kano things, but I wanted to point that out, that this actually has a lot more game than the other ninjas into a Kano. And that's a good thing, because I think Kano is still pretty decent right now in the meta. Traverse and 12 Petal Kasaya are both just absolute MVPs in the deck. And Stride of Reprisal, this is the cool thing. Um, that LSS is doing. They are making common equipment that is just better. It's just better than the generics that have been around since WTR. Like this compared to um, Snapdragon Scalers, this is just better. It just beats it because it gives you the combo basically in your hand that you're gonna be playing to. Of course, you also have Pouncing Paws uh, in certain uh, areas. This is a block one Battle Worn, which feels kind of nice. And then uh, Tiger Strep Shuko is an always play type card. Now, the list, as we mentioned, does not have uh, Bonds in it. You don't have access to Bonds of Ancestry. You're not playing uh, Descendant Gust Wave as well. So what are we doing instead? We're running five Biting Breezes, two reds, three blues. And these are just go agains. They're just like one go again, three go again, give you a Crouching Tiger. We have uh, Bittering Thorns, which I think is a fantastic card, and it's in my Zen list as well, uh, which is a one for four, give your next attack plus one, which can give it to a Crouching Tiger. You've got uh, Create a Crouching Tiger, which is super, super fantastic. We've got combo cards in the form of Chase the Tail, which is everywhere, of course. Everyone's playing Chase the Tail, no matter what version of Zen you're running. Um, Growl is something that's unique to this list and that it's go going to be buffing a Crouching Tiger. So as you can see, all of these cards we're talking about, Untamed, buffing a Crouching Tiger, are making Crouching Tigers 
that much better. And uh, do keep in mind that several of these are combo cards like Chase the Tail, Modeling Key. These are things that you're gonna be able to get off of Zen when you transcend. As far as transcends are concerned, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're running all the transcend cards along with the sacred art. So that is a little bit different from what some of the some of the list I've seen. Sometimes they cut the the minus one and uh, run all of the other ones. But including this as well means that you have more opportunities to transcend. And I said this before, and I'm gonna say it again. I think the the heroes that benefit most from transcending in order are probably Zen first, and then Enigma, I would say maybe second, and then New maybe third, but the two of them are far closer. But I think out in front, in the front, in the lead of transcending, Zen is the first and foremost. Why? Because it goes and gets you one of your very powerful cards, and it gives you a Crouching Tiger. And this deck takes full advantage of that, which I think is a really, really cool way to build uh, Zen, because it's just looking to get combo cards that do things with Tigers, or just put down damage that does things with Tigers, like Biting Breeze, for example, gives you a Tiger, and then play value cards that make those Tigers deal one. You push all of this on like innocuous turns, and then you play Art of War, and you just do your sick pop-off turns, right? And and they're still pretty pop-offy. We still have 100 wins and things like that to draw into. Of course, we still have Ancestral Harmony, which doesn't hit um, as much in this deck as you would uh, think compared to like the other list, but it still hits fairly well. I mean, we've got still got uh, some number of cards here that we'll be able to hit off the uh, Ancestral Harmony. But the, the pop-offs still happen. It's just now we're doing it with Tigers rather than the Bonds Descendant, Bonds Descendant back and forth. Uh, and I think in this version, Salt the Wound is, is almost easier to play because there are all of these Tigers that are gonna be coming in for one that don't really deserve to be blocked and therefore Salt the Wound has even more uh, utility in that matchup. So congrats to Jake. And this is uh, this is cool to see that Zen is actually winning in two different ways uh, with two different types of deck lists. In fact, Matt McKinnis here in Dallas at the DreamHack Dallas ProQuest Plus, uh, a much smaller event, picked up a win on uh, Zen as well. And in fact, I'm gonna be sitting down with him and uh, putting out a deck tech with his version of a uh, Zen list. So if you wanna see that, check back probably tomorrow or on uh, Wednesday. Wait, no, today's Tuesday. So on Thursday, probably tomorrow or Thursday uh, for that list and that deck tech if you're looking to pick up Zen for the upcoming national season. And the final list I wanna talk about is actually, this is not me, I promise, this is not me. Uh, the ProQuest Plus that was played on Sunday at DreamHack Dallas was picked up by Chris Iali, who was in town to uh, partially play a little bit of Magic and then uh, ended up shifting over and playing in both of the ProQuest on Saturday and Sunday. He picked up a win on Leviah. Uh, which is very cool because Leviah is one of those heroes that has been sort of seething in the undercurrents of the meta and showing that she's incredibly powerful, but not really posting up the results. And it was a small pro quest plus, I think it was like 18, 20 players, something like that. Um, nevertheless, he got to the finish line through top eight and all of that sort of stuff with Leviah. Now, I don't know if this is his exact list that he played on the day. This is just the list that he was streaming from recently. By the way, if, you, if you're not watching the AGE, like channel YouTube channel go check it out uh, they do fantastic streams now as well Chris is like on there almost all the time I think he's gonna stream today so you should go check that out and tell him I sent you I'll probably be in chat as well because it's super fun to watch him play really nice guy as well uh, this is the list or somewhat of the list that he was playing and a couple of interesting things to note this is running the brand new Shadow Realm Horror um, this is not necessarily fundamentally changing the list too much from what has normally been run in Leviah. We still have Carrion Husk. We're not swapping out for Savage Sash and changing the base of everything, being like uh, two cost and less, that sort of stuff. Um, we are back to including Doomsday, which tell me if I'm wrong in chat below, in the comments below. I don't believe Doomsday was um, like an auto include always. I think it had been cut recently, or not recently. I think it had been cut, but is making its way back in uh, to the deck list. Tell me if I'm wrong in a comment below, but I don't remember seeing Doomsday for the longest time in these deck lists. 
Uh, but everything else is pretty straight up stock standard, as you would expect. We've got the powerful cards like Swing Big that just give you a two for eight and a great popper, uh, including the new cards that we uh, have seen get added to the list, like Slithering Shadow Pete, of course, a fantastic card. The same sort of uh, base, Sin Packing, obviously doing some some great work in KO, but also making its way here. And uh, I do believe this was a version of the list that uh, he was experimenting, dropping uh, the uh, eye card, the Beast Within. He dropped Beast Within from the list. Uh, maybe he added it back in for the actual tournament. I'm not sure. Maybe he'll leave a comment down below. I'll go ask him if he wants to. And then, of course, the sideboard that he was running up to that point uh, looks very similar. Of course, you've got Howl from Beyond for fatigue matchups. Uh, Shadow of Blasma Fett for like a side game plan. Snag is a card we should talk about. This card is making the rounds all over the place because of, uh, well, really just because of new. Like we should just say it's simply because of new uh, and it's doing some serious work. Like this card is a silver bullet against new and she definitely has to play around it or has to just deal with it when it comes up. Like your opponent's gonna have three copies of this. You can expect them to. And then on any time you're playing uh, Bonds of Agony, you can just expect them to play Snag and if they don't, you're happy. So this card is definitely making uh, its way into a ton of lists and not surprised at all to see it pop in here as well. And of course, you of course now have access to Leviah Redeemed and have had access to Leviah Redeemed since uh, Dusk Till Dawn. By the way, I just opened my first Leviah Redeemed three week, two weeks ago. <laughs> like I hadn't had it up to this point. And I was like, oh, well now I could actually play Leviah, uh, which is kind of funny. Uh, because now I have access to that card. But congratulations to Chris for picking up a win on a hero that a lot of people are pretty high on for this next season. And I could see doing a lot of work, just the danger of, uh, you know, playing an intricate hero that also just hurts herself uh, is that you may not be able to make that run with it, but great players are going to show time and time again that they can curb past that uh, poor RNG at times. Uh, and make good decisions to put themselves in good places to win big. So let me know what you think about the deck lists and the meta we're going into in a comment below. Do you think it's going to be more interactive? Do you think it's going to be uh, so wide and spread out like we saw in uh, Heavy Hitters? Do you think it's going to be more synergistic in nature? I have my own personal opinions. And if you want to ask questions, sound off in the chat tonight at Give and Take. We're going to answer questions uh, basically all night. We're just going to hang out and have more of a casual podcast slash show experience. So if you want to come and uh, be part of that, check tonight around 8.30 Central. If you enjoyed this type of video, leave a comment down below, press a button to make a number go slightly higher because numbers going up is where we want to be. As always, everybody, thanks for watching.